Alex Perez. Oh, there's somebody else. Yeah, it's me here. All right, so we're live. Uh, estamos en vivo. Miércoles, Wednesday edition of the Open Flip chat. We have here Jose Luis joined us, and I believe that's Alex that joined us. Yeah. And April joined us, so we'll probably do a mix of Spanish English depending on who connects and what we feel like hablando en el momento. Uh, we'll go Spanglish mode. And uh, Brian Bennett, I know, has a group of teachers he's working with in a workshop on foot class, and they might either listen in or join in. I'm not sure. Um, if anyone wants to join in, poke Ken via any of the methods you can, email, Twitter, Facebook, and I'll try to dial you into the conversation. I don't like to publish the URL to everybody in the planet because you can get weird people joining a Google Hangout <laughs> and uh, showing up, you know, topless or weird stuff. Okay. So, oh, okay. Now, now you're freaking me out even more. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's why you don't post public URLs to a Google Hangout live session because anyone in the world could jump in at that moment. Uh, but if you want to join, I'll be happy to share the link to jump in or give you an invite. Um, so why don't we start with uh, introducing Spanish English. Uh, we'll start with Empezamos con José Luis. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es José Luis. Yo trabajo en Campus Puebla. Soy profesor de preparatoria. Y bueno, he estado siguiendo el, uh, a, algunas actividades de aula invertida. Y bueno, ahora eh, estuve leyendo un poco acerca de esta, eh, um, espacios flexibles de aprendizaje. Y bueno, pues me integro a la, al Hangout. Para, para compartir, para platicar, para aprender. Muy bien, excelente, pues bienvenidos. Alex. Hey guys. Soy, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if, if I should do it in English or Spanish. Whatever works for you. Well, uh, I'm Alejandro Pérez Villaseñor, I'm Alex. I'm currently in Campus Puebla. I see that Ken is already showing us some flexible environment. <laughs> Campus Guadalajara, I think, <laughs> and it's the second time I've been enrolled in this flipped classroom course. I hope I can finish it <laughs> this time. So awesome! Welcome. You guys. have a better network connection this time, Alex. Remember last time we were on Google Hangouts, you had this kind of yeah. really low Hangout. Good to see you. Thanks. Excellent. And April? Uh, yes, um, my name is April Budenrath, and I'm a member of the Flips. Uh, Flip Network or Flipped uh, the Cadre, and Andre, I've been flipping yeah. for about yeah Cadre. Uh, I've been flipping for about ten years. I teach uh, English and philosophy, and I'm uh, I do consulting for the uh, for the people educators in the flipped environments. I was trying to mute out that uh, my mute out the plane going above me from the Air Force Base by the campus here. All right, so let's talk um, flexible environment. That's our topic this week. Uh, I'll just prefix everything with we have, I think, nine people with their blogs registered. I don't think I've added Alex's, but uh, one thing I should mention to people like Alex who are taking it a second time, I know, um, I think it's Maria Lena who has her blog registered, and she actually shows her post from the previous course, which is cool. Um, but what you want to be sure if you're recycling a blog that you let us know um, what category or tag you want to use for this version of the course and then we only pull that into the course. Okay. If you go to the course webpage now and you look at the menu, I'm not going to do a tour this time, you can look at this week's video uh, that April and I did uh, Monday. It shows you can click on the blog on the right side and it'll show everybody's posts that are registered. So if your stuff isn't showing up there, then you need to contact myself or April or even Raquel. I just gave Raquel uh, editor privilege on the site so she can fix my Spanish. Uh, so <laughs> thanks to Raquel. Shout out to Raquel for doing that for me. That's awesome. Uh, this is flexible environment. So um, let's let's start or empezamos with uh, Jose Luis or who, who wants to jump in and talk about their thoughts on flexible environment? So I don't have to talk. <laughs> well, something that, that we mentioned last time. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Okay, one thing that I found amazing about flexible environments is that it's not only video that we're talking about. 
in the first article that you posted on the on the web page, it states that video is is a good tool, but it's flipping the classroom should not be entirely about filming videos and posting them to, to the students. The, the environment itself plays a great a great deal of work in this in this philosophy. And I I've been trying to apply it to my to my own classes. I've had some some issues with it. Not most of the students at this stage like to take part in this kind of experiments and change of education technologies. But I found that quite another bunch of, of guys have found it very compelling and attractive to their learning skills. So I think that the environment itself, the, the classroom itself, plays a great a great role in, in flipping our, our teaching methods. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, and this is April. I teach uh, in the upper division of high school and so they're college prepping and trying to get them to flip or change what they've been used to. You know, here are juniors and seniors who are competing for scholarships and going to very um, elite universities and they know how to play the game of school to get the grades, but they're not learning. And they get into my classroom and they all of a sudden have to demonstrate learning. And that flexibility is really tough for some of them. I totally agree. But once you get them involved, then they can kind of see the method to the madness, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I have to remember to unmute my mic if I want to talk. Also, <laughs> Luis, ¿quieres agregar algo sobre tu, tu, tus ideas en el ambiente flexible? Claro. Eh, es algo que tiene compartido en, en el blog, en, en la entrada de la semana cero. Eh, ah, perdón, pero todos estamos en inglés. So, um, there is a concern about the students uh, that they're trying to jump from a traditional model of uh, learning to a new way to a new um, uh, well a new way to uh, to sense to experiment with uh, different types of uh, of uh, not like so mm -hmm. uh, my my principle my main concern is that sometimes they're trying to to figure it out how to how to work with the new ideas but at the same time they're very struggling uh, switching from a model that uh, where they are expecting to receive everything to a model that they they should improve their skills where they uh, they need to um, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, to to test themselves in mm -hmm. order to learn so that uh, it's a little scary for them and they're t they're always not complaining but always asking a lot of questions but not in the sense of learning like. I'm asking a question, uh, and I want to present you with a with a problem. I, I want to that you know that I'm experiencing certain certain problems. So uh, I'm asking you a lot, not because I want to learn. It's because I want to tell you that I'm I'm having a hard time, and uh, and and those are, well, that's part of my concern while I'm working or while I'm trying to introduce new ways or new approaches, new techniques to them because they are always waiting for me to solve the problem at the end. So they're saying, okay, it's good, uh, it's a flexible environment, I, I really enjoyed the experience and I'm seeing that you're good, good effort, but at the end, uh, uh, just cut the, everything that it's extra here, please teacher, and show us the, the, the solution or uh, guide us through the process of learning and that's it. Uh, I, I don't want to that responsibility for me, for myself. And, and I think that's a really, really important point, Jose Luis. I'll get to Benjamin here in a second before I forget what I was going to say. Um, the, the students taking charge of learning is really hard. And um, I want us all to explore that ourselves. But in my experience working with my students, is, and they've told me that I, I just want to know what am I supposed to do? Is, or is this okay? Is the way I'm doing this the way that you, the teacher who's giving me the mark, wants me to do it in your format, not my teacher from last semester or last year. And and taking charge of their education is, is very empowering for students, but I think so many of them are just freaked out by it. Uh, Benjamin, I, I see you're there. You want to jump in and say hello and give us your thoughts on flexible environment? Sure. i um, not sure how my internet's coming through uh, or the audio. I think Audio's I'm, awesome. Okay, yeah. I'm going to keep the video off because uh, 
it took me a little while to get in. I apologize for showing up a little bit late here. Oh, no, don't be sorry. Um, the, yeah, uh, I think you're just kind of to jump in the conversation here. I think uh, it's certainly a, a change or a shift in responsibility, uh, as you are mentioning, as far as what students are expecting and what role we as their uh, instructor are, are taking. And I think, I, at least in my experience with my students, it's the flipped classroom just has a lot of potential meanings depending on you know the profile of the students, the course, even the comfort level uh, of the teacher as far as how much of the content uh, is being um, offered outside the classroom, what how students are becoming accountable for that information that they're accessing outside the classroom, and then what dynamic uh, would exist uh, for them having access to that information outside the classroom. It, it's really not clear cut as far as you know, just as easy as setting up videos uh, and having students access those videos and then automatically being able to do some dynamic activity face to face, at least in my experience. And so a lot of it is this transition and them getting used to accessing the content. And sometimes the content uh, could be created themselves. I mean, the students obviously could create some of this content that they, that they are using. Uh, some of the content that I create could be in the form of a tutorial. There's just a lot of options and things to think about, at least when I think about flipping the classroom and also the role that the teacher and the students take within, um, within that environment, uh, not to mention the, the role of the school or the institution takes. Go ahead and grab it there, someone. I'm trying to get someone else connected here. I'm multitasking. Well, if, if I may give him a little a little dip in, into what Benjamin is, is, is telling us, I think that the institution plays an, a, a great role in what happens in flipping the classroom because sometimes we as teachers, we're, we have good intentions. We try to give some new practices. Students are willing to, to accept them, but we find that the institution asks and demands from us a, a, a grading, a note, and some of our colleagues, like, they don't tend to look at flipped environments with good eyes. They tend to look at us as the crazy guys who are trying to change something in a well-established institution. And, and that's when we can find some, some barriers in what we intend to do and what we can we, and what we can achieve. Because if in my class I tend to take this approach to teaching and some other student tells them that that's not how it should be done, or someone, in, in case of tech, someone from another campus like questions my teaching skills because I'm teaching uh, in a flipped environment, it tends to diminish the desire of the students to enroll in this kind of, uh, of models. So it's, it's very important to have a, a supporting institution, to have supporting partners in education systems so we can flow through it. Another thing is that it's funny because uh, I, I think that we are all in middle or higher levels of education, but in lower levels, elementary school, kindergarten, everyone learns at, in a flipped environment. It's the, it's the natural way of a human being to learn or acquire new, new knowledge. It's, it's funny that in, 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 it, it's so hard at, at higher level to try to go in, into this dynamic again. That is something that we have created in them. Oh, I, I am to pick up on April. that. I, um, I, I totally agree that we've created this monster, and we have to figure out some way. I mean, it's not a monster, but it can be at times. Uh, and uh, you're absolutely right about having to have the support of your institution, your school, um, you know, whatever that happens to be. And uh, I know here in the United States. Uh, I, um, my daughter is a senior at a, uh, a university here, and uh, when she was a sophomore, um, one of her teachers at university was beginning to, to flip, and and uh, she was really excited. She was like, "Mom, it's coming into college!" So I know it's moving its way up, but you're right; uh, students are hesitant. Um, some of the more uh, tenured professors uh, have a certain way of doing things that I've come across, and that's okay. But we need to be able to, like you said, teach 
and help them learn the way they need to learn. They have to have that critical thinking. They have to have that ownership or, you know, we're not teaching them anything. We're teaching them how to play a system. To memorize, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, th that's, I, I haven't, I don't worry so much about teaching evaluation numbers, but we just got ours back, and, and I published recently my blog about um, I most of them awesome comments, but I have this one long comment, and I have to take it seriously because the student took his time or her time to write this long post about basically I teach him nothing. Like, why should I, why do I pay for this class where I have to learn myself and the teacher's not teaching me? So there's that reaction. Yeah, Alex, just give a big sigh. Well, yeah, it's they, they don't value the, mm -hmm. or what someone else is doing for them. It's right. not that we're not teaching anything. It's like we're guiding them to find their own, their own answers. And that is that is what's going to be like once they once they are out of school. Mm -hmm. And it's not in just a practical a practical sense or a professional sense. In every aspect of everyday life, you're gonna. You're gonna learn in based okay. on your own experiences, so that's that's valuable teaching, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. But but there's still this. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. There's still this uh, question yeah. all the time. Uh, teacher, what are we going to do? Uh, teacher, uh, is is it right? Uh, should we do this? Should we do that? They are expecting something from us, and yeah. uh, I'm teaching in high school. Not in the not in the college where the guys are. Uh, they they appreciate the experience. They appreciate the the way they they are uh, increasing or developing their own skills. But in high school, they they're expecting something from the teacher. They are waiting for us to give them something, and at the end, they are going to tell us, "I, I really learned because that guy made me do it." Do, do this or that, and when they are when we are presenting them with uh, these uh, flexible environments where we're asking them to do something before the class to to learn something to to do something uh, by their own, they're they're is trying uh, well they are starting to feel like they're doing everything by themselves, and so at the end they're saying, okay, I'm not learning, I'm 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 just doing I'm following instruction from a person that is doing nothing for, uh, for me before the experience. And uh, that's, that's uh, I believe, uh, one of the concerns from, uh, from me and from other teachers. And uh, I, I think the, in this part, the, I, I have a, like, uh, a flexible uh, area where my boss says, OK, go ahead. If you're trying this, go ahead. There's no problem. But I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to to do two things: to motivate the motivate the students, and in the second, to to keep them motivated. Because if I ask them to to watch a couple of videos or to do to try a couple of uh, activities, they will do it. But in in the long run, uh, at the end, uh, if I do the same thing uh, with the same guys, at the end they're going to 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 lose the the, the this this will to. To, to try new things. So, so that's that's what I think. That's what I I've seen so far. And, and I'll be and I'll be flexible here because that's this week's topic. Um, a, a lot of this is going to blend in. Like a, a lot of what we're talking about is actually more the L in learning culture of our students. I'll get to Christine in a second. To introduce her. Um, and what we should all be doing here in this course, even even those of us that have like ten years flipping, like April, is it's a reflective process. We're talking to each other. We're listening on opinions from each other of what, what's happening in our practice. And for those of you that haven't blogged a lot before, this concept of blogging now and, and keeping track of what you're thinking today is, is amazing to go back and look at next year or even next semester or five years down the line and see what was I thinking, what was in my headspace back then about flip learning. So we got two people that joined. I'll let Christine join in and say hello and then Simon. We're talking flexible environment. I'm going to mute out Simon for a second. Really loud. Ah, who's loud? I muted somebody. Christine, can we hear you? Or are you just watching? No? She's muted. 
I think you gotta hit the unmute button. I think I muted. I think it's Simon. It's really loud. Ah. Or Simon, go ahead and talk. Can you hear, can you hear you. me now? Yeah, I can oh, hear you, Christine. Man. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. I'll mute out Simon for a sec. It's best if you mute the mic. Uh, people talk. <laughs> It's chaos controlled. Or go ahead, Simon. <laughs> Whoever can jump in. Simon or Christine, because we want to hear from you. How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yep, awesome. we can hear you. Oh, okay. I think I, I kept hitting mute. Um, I'm Christine Case, and I'm originally from New Mexico. Right now, I'm working here in La Espol in Guayaquil, Ecuador. So mm -hmm. welcome from South America. Awesome. And I'm here at the English department in Espol, and April came and conducted the flipped training um, workshop, a week-long workshop, with the support of the administration. So I'm really happy that um, Espol is supporting this culture and change and innovative learning. Um, and I'll be here for a little bit more time and then come back as a consultant. I, my husband and I and our family are here for one year. Um, and I had a, a question about the flexible environment because implementing it takes time. And right now what I'm seeing are the teachers are so overwhelmed with just the, the job of teaching but also they have this additional training that they must attend and their morale is really low so that how like, what do you recommend that we convey to the administrators how important it is and how many hours a week should there be spent for collaborating and being reflective and really implementing this flexible environment? Who wants to jump in? I got way too much to say about that. Ah. <laughs> Anybody? Well, I'll, I'll uh, jump in. Um, I think the I would start with how one defines you mentioned the job of teaching. Yeah. I think first is to start there, to say, okay, what do we mean by teaching? And really then look at uh, teaching as, and this kind of ties into some of the other earlier comments about, do we focus more on teaching or do we focus more on what the students are actually doing? And okay. we, get, we focus so much on the act of teaching that we lose sight of objectives and really what we're expecting from our students. So, Thinking of the job of teaching more globally in terms of the entire environment, uh, the entire experience that we want our students really to be a part of, and that could be obviously inside of class. I, and I, I, sorry, I'm not sure if you're within, if you're uh, talking about like a formal educational context where you have a face-to-face -face classroom or online environment. But the idea is to look at both the the class environment and the uh, educative experience that you want to create for your students outside or beyond uh, the classroom experience. Think in terms of uh, uh, delivery, synchronous versus asynchronous, online versus offline, and then think of the learning theories that really look at that whole experience that you want your students to be a part of, and then think of the role of the teacher. What is my role as, as their instructor? How can I facilitate what I want them uh, to do? I would start with the student outcomes first, start with the assessments first based on the goals of the course, obviously, and then once you have those assessments and that experience, you have kind of your head around what that should look like, then think in terms of, okay, what can I do and what can I create, thinking in terms of uh, educational resources that I can bring together to help them interact and you know, reach those objectives. I mean, this I know it's kind of a general answer here, but I think it's more looking again at the the actual uh, expectation that we have mm -hmm. as our job as teacher, and then maybe review that and revamp that in terms of uh, student outcomes. Okay. Yeah. And this is April. Yeah, I, I'm going to totally piggyback on that. When I was there, yeah, I, I, know, I know it's frustrating. Um, I still, I'm an old school kind of Madeline Hunter that dates me, I know, but I, um, I definitely know UBD and all that stuff. But I, you know, beginning with the end in mind is really the most important thing. 
you know, what is our end goal? And then to have a conversation about that end goal and, and then work your way backwards um, is really, you know, backwards uh, design or whatever you want to call it nowadays um, is really, you know, like ben, Benjamin said, you know, the best way to get, get everyone's head around it and to be moving in a positive direction so they're not frustrated. And what, and what sounds I, like you've got, go ahead, I'm sorry. One thing I've, uh, I've looked at as well to be kind of concrete is we're going to look at the four hurdles, and, and one of them is T that John writes about that's time, and, and that's what we're talking about here. And and I always thought, well, I'll get my administration to just unload a class for me so I'll have more time to do this flipping thing. And, well, that's not going to happen. Um, what, what I want teachers to do is really look at where are you spending all your time. Even use a time tracking uh activity, some kind of time management tool to go, where am I spending all my time? Am I that teacher in, you know, sitting there on the couch watching TV with a bunch of papers and marking them with a red pen that is just eating tons of my time? Where where are you spending your time and where can you free up some of that time? Maybe using technology or just less quizzes would be great. Um, and then see how you can put that time into something that's more productive. Kind of a return on investment look. And, yeah. and with that, let me see if I can get Simon to jump in here to say hello, because we haven't got Simon online. You're going to have to unmute oh, yourself, yes. Simon. Go ahead, and I'll mute Christine, and we'll try to all keep ourselves muted. So I think there's a button at the top there, Simon. you got to click yeah. the microphone. Awesome. Already did so. Hi. Spanish or English is good. No, nice to be with you. Um, awesome. I'm late today, I'm sorry. Had some technical problems. And I'm really eager on learning in, in this group because I'm quite new as a teacher. Right? It's not my original profession. Okay. And I, what I like the most about the classroom, as far as I understand it, is that I can make learning something interesting to my students. That's what's my, my goal, my objective. Awesome. What, uh, what level are you teaching, Simon? Uh, high school. Awesome. So no, uh, no what they call prepa. Prepa okay. the tech. Cool. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to have you in here. I'm going to open it because we're... There we go. So, um, I'm not muted. Good. Awesome. Good job, Ken. Um, it's... One thing that's really important for people that are listening in, because there's all these group of people that are active right now, and there's probably lots of people that are kind of watching it or lurking or seeing what's going on, is a, a, a key to a CMOOC like this is that you're participating, you're, you're watching what other people are doing, you're sharing what you're doing, and learning from what they're sharing. And this is really what this is all about. Am I still live? Yep, you're still live. Okay, cool. I saw everything freeze up. I thought I lost my internet. Um, back to Christine. Um, let's let's see your thoughts on those answers from Benjamin and April and myself. Can you unmute? You're muted, Christine. Did you want to answer? Hello? Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, I was saying that um, it was great sage advice, uh, you know, putting things in logical order for the teachers, and I can kind of share, I'll share that with the staff. Um, I think um, stepping aside from that, my concern is the staff are so overloaded with homework that they have to do for this current training. It's detracting from them being able to be reflective. Um, collaborate and so those are just some worries that I have and I, I'm not sure I guess I just need to say it like it is and talk to the administration to say this is a, a valid concern because right. yes I think looking at how you're spending your own time we have to be accountable absolutely um, you know two weeks ago the morale was great and then they started this training and the morale has gone down and the, the ability to collaborate or to develop flip lessons and try it out has not like stopped but they're just so overwhelmed just burnt out the the one one thing we've got to look at is is oh, I'll put in the other pillar of I and intentional content if if they're overloaded for homework we got to really ask ourselves what's the intent of that homework that they're doing um, yes and definitely yep. 
they should be doing that the, the homework they're doing about anything they're learning as teachers should be a reflective process and and I would say blogging about it or video blogging about it and, yeah. and talking with each other education is a social process for our kids and education is a social process for ourselves mm -hmm. so I um, really need to step back and, and think about the intentionality of the content of that homework assignments okay thank you well, I'll follow up with that yeah yeah who else wants to jump? Benjamin unmuted himself, so I think he's got something wound up. Well, I, yeah, I was just uh, going to add, I think it's more about working smarter, not working harder. It's we're really looking, and again, I go back to my original thought about what is it that they're doing that really bogs them down, and then looking at the resources that they have available to say, okay, is there a way that we can streamline this? Is there a way that we can be more accessible to the students but give you know, uh, better feedback perhaps, and maybe start the conversation there, I think naturally that will lead you into some sort of flip, you know, scenario uh, uh, that will, you know, hopefully be, be helpful, you know, that would work a little bit more effectively and efficiently for you and your students. But I think really starting at that point, well, what's, what's, what's bringing them down and seeing if there's a way that maybe some sort of technology might, might assist them in, in that way. I know personally, I... I rely on technology in order to be more accessible, in order to give actually more feedback to my students than I otherwise would not be able to do. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what I would uh, add to that. Excellent. Who else has something? We're up on a half hour, but the conversation's going, so I'm not stopping yet. And I have some training thing right now that I don't want to be in. No? Alex? Oh, I was I was going back to to the app of, of flipped and being flexible in in the environment of learning, and I think that it's, it it has a great value for for us as teachers for for the guys as students, because we can provide them some content, they can take a peek wherever they are at the moment that they need them to, that can be done with, with the videos, but we are also like enabling them. To take th their learning uh, experiences into their their most comfortable comfortable environment. I, I'm uh, I'm looking at Ken. I'm being really jealous that he is in the uh, outside in in Camps Guadalajara. I'm here stuck in my office for the moment, and that is something. That... What 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 what? <laughs> well, in, in a. I, I'm sure I'm not a, a psychologist or, or anything like that, but I'm sure that it should have a, an impact on, on the way you see things and the way you learn. If you're in a comfortable environment with a comfortable temperature and breathing fresh air instead of being in a lousy chair or in a not well lit room, so I think it makes a, a great improvement in the way you, you, you learn things. Well, it looks like we got Cecilia jumping in, but then she jumped out. So yeah, yeah. Well, my my colleagues always ask me why I'm outside. Do I not have an office? And I, my answer is, well, I, I like working out here. It's it's nice. My students find me here. It's good for me to be outside, and uh, I don't need a office to work in. Oops. April jumped out. She needed to leave, so that's uh that's expected. Uh, Cecilia's back. Maybe she'll jump in, and we'll let her say hi. Are you there, Cecilia? Bum, bum, bum. She's kind of coming in. She came in. We saw her, and then she jumped off. All right. Um, let me let me wrap up for now because we're just about up on time. Who who wants to add in? We'll let everyone have a chance to add in their last points about flexible environment, and then I'll let you go and write about it and and video log about it this week on your uh, course. A reminder for everyone, if I don't have your blog registered and publishing to our system, please let me know what it is and I'll make sure that um, it's there because everyone wants to be able to go in and comment on each other's uh, blogs. So why don't we start back with Jose Luis because we haven't heard from you for a while. Do you want to say anything before we wrap up? I know yours is there. I saw it. I added yours. Anything to finish up for today, Jose Luis? Your mic is unmuted, but I can't hear you. Hmm. And we'll go to Benjamin. Wrap-ups? Yeah, um, I'll just add, uh, I was actually a drafted a post a couple of days ago, still trying to get time to do the video, but uh, I'm going to throw out a couple of 
uh, some thoughts that are variations on the four pillars that you shared um, that may be um, more, I guess, I guess it's more better understood by most of us, the four pillars, but uh, I'm going to be working uh, on a slightly uh, different uh, perspective, I think, uh, when, what I'm going to be sharing. So I'm going to be throwing that out there, and I hope to get some feedback and thoughts about uh, whether, uh, whether you agree, disagree. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to sharing that with you and hopefully get some feedback uh, from others about uh, different perspectives on, uh, on, on the four pillars, specifically the flexible learning environment. But mm -hmm. I'll, I'll end by saying that I think for me the flexible learning environment is really about knowing and thinking about one's practice as an educator, thinking about the profile and the students and what they're after, the outcomes versus the pedagogy, and really trying to put that to, in perspective uh, when dealing with the types of environments uh, that we are making available uh, for our students or the students themselves are, are uh, making available uh, amongst themselves. So I'll just stop there. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the conversation. I really uh, enjoy these. And I'll go ahead and mute my mic. Thank you. Awesome. And, and I'll remind people, jump in and read. Benjamin's been blogging for a long time, so those of you who are new bloggers, don't, don't get intimidated by people who have long blog posts and awesome amounts of content. Jump in and, and comment on other people's posts. Even if you don't feel comfortable sharing a lot yourself in your own posts, um, go and read others and, and put some comments there. So let's go to Christine. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Well, um, I really like the idea of, I, I remember as a beginning teacher a thousand years ago, one of the pillars was being flexible and that a flipped classroom is naturally flexible, um, but that more importantly, the students need to drive the instruction. You know, you have goals and objectives and outcomes, absolutely, you have a map, but I like that you can veer off the map to get mm -hmm. back to it because this has to be addressed. Um, so the beauty of that is a really great, um, like, freedom for teachers to drive the instruction based on student needs. So. And, and, and there you get back to administrative support, Christine. And, and yes. if, if it's going to be very self-guided by students, then we're going to go off that path. And that means that path better be a much reduced core stuff we have to cover um, in our classes so that there's room to be flexible about where the students are learning cover a base set of objectives because they're going to have to take the next class which depends on yours possibly uh, but we need to be a lot more flexible on where we're going down that path. Yes. Let's, let's go on to Alex and see if uh, we can hear Jose Luis after as well. Sure well in my own experience teaching is about being flexible too even though we've had some great examples of teachers that are everything but flexible mostly teachers from the past three, four decades that are about to retire. Our students are flexible in nature. They, they learn in different ways. They have different desires, different needs of, of, of the same content, maybe. So if we try to appeal to a, to a large group with different characteristics, we will need to, to be flexible ourselves. And we should be flexible with ourselves too. Maybe we had a, a course already planned, we have all of our material well established and sometimes we'll need to let go a theme, grab another one, maybe go out of the, of the path as Christine said and maybe go into uh, a, a sub-theme that one of our students asked us about just to be, uh, to fulfill a compelling learning experience. So. Being flexible is not just about the environment, it's being flexible with our students, being flexible with ourselves, and that is what, what, what we should start with. And that's great. I remember, if you look back at the course last winter, winter 2015 edition, I had Brian Bennett and I believe Andrew and I think it was Troy and I can't remember who else was on. And we talked about the first pillar of FLIP and, and he explained that, um, actually April was involved in writing that document, that they were really talking about the physical classroom environment and, and both my, I remember myself and Andrew going, oh, that's not how I interpreted this uh, flexible environment and I'm thinking about outside the classroom and how I communicate with my students. And so uh, it's, it's one interesting thing with these four pillars. They're very flexible. 
I, I don't know if we can hear Costa Luis to wrap up. Mike's unmuted, but I don't hear you. I'm not sure if you're completely still there. If not, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us. We're doing this every Wednesday at this time, so noon my time, Central Mexico, and that's 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, I think we might hear Jose Luis again. And then Thursday at 8 p.m. my time, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Can we hear you again, Jose Luis? Your video changed. I can see your video now, but I can't hear you. Ah, bummer. Well, we'll have to connect again. It was really good. I can't hear you, so it's not going to work probably, Jose Luis. The microphone died probably. Um, I really appreciate everyone jumping in. This is awesome. Uh, I'm kind of migrating away from inviting external experts to come and hang out for half an hour, and I, I really personally enjoy hearing from you more online in this format. And I look forward to reading your blogs and uh, having you comment on everyone else's blogs. So have an excellent day. Thank you, Simon, for joining as well, and Christine. And it was great for Simon. I, I believe that was his daughter waving to us, but I'm not sure. Uh, thanks for joining in, and have an excellent week. Can we hear you again, Jose Luis? I heard someone say something. There was Alex. No? Yeah. Awesome. So have an excellent week, and we'll uh, probably catch you tomorrow evening. Anyone wants to join, please contact me privately. Reminder, I can't publish this URL to jump straight in because like weird stuff can happen on the Internet. Um, that's why it's a little bit complicated to join. I know Christine was watching us, but uh, it took a while for me to get her connected. So. Uh, if, if you've never done a Google Hangout before, the first few times are hard. We can even do like a practice Hangout, just me and you, and, and that works well, or grab someone else and figure out how the technology works. But it's a, it's a blast to talk with all of you and a blast to reflect. Have an awesome week, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow evening. And let me hit the Stop Broadcast button.